Well, we're back, part four of three, on the uh, Beehive heater series. I noticed in the last video I didn't give you an opportunity to look around on the inside of the box. I think it's important so that you can see the placement of all of the components, and then we will take a good look at the wiring and how the, uh, how the box is wired. Now, I'm not going to go through it again, but what I'll do is I'll cut back to the video that I showed you the first time we went through the wiring, and I'll give you a split screen where you can actually see a wiring diagram that should help answer any questions that you have. And then when we're done with that, we are going to stack these on the bench and show you the configuration of these boxes on your hive. All right, so let's begin with the, uh, the placement of the components. These are the controllers. We know where those were. We mount them in the back of the box. The fans, they're mounted in the bottom of the box, as well as the thermostat. And then on the bottom, we have a normal household outlet, and then the AC adapter that came with the fans. All right. Then we've stapled all of the wires to the bottom so that we can make sure to keep it clean and easy to change and easy to trace the wires if there's a problem. And, uh, and that's it. Of course, we have the screens on the inside. This will keep the, uh, the bees from getting up in, in, the, uh, in the box. But uh, overall, that's what it looks like on the inside. The heater box, just two lights, very simple. But the controller box, I thought it would be important for you to take a look at it. Now, let's take a look at the wiring uh, video that we shot last time and I'll split screen that with the, uh, with the diagram. All right, so let's take a look. Here's where our power is coming in from the wall, right? So you've got a hot side and a ground side, black and red. Each one of these we're going to split into two leads. We're gonna power this device and power this device. We're gonna provide a ground to this device and to this device. So if we look, let's follow the hot wire first because the majority of the wiring on this is for the hot wire. The only time that you're going to put the ground wire in this unit is on the first two leads. This is what actually powers this device. Everything else is going to be hot. So we have the hot wire coming off. We split into two leads, one for the device itself and one that is going to provide power to this outlet, which is going to provide power to the heating unit below. Okay, so we have hot coming in. Split it off to hot going right here. And this is for heater. You'll see where it says heating and cooling up here. We're going into the heater side. And then we're bringing hot out of the heat side and running it down to the bottom box. We're bringing the ground wire, it's this one right here. The ground wire is coming into this box and the only place where you connect ground to your controller is right next to the hot wire. Power supply, 110. Hot ground, that's it. You're going to split the ground. The other half of it is going to go right down to your heating box. It's going to split the circuit. So when this controller determines it's time to turn the heat on, it's going to provide power. You're continuously providing the ground state. So this is going to switch right here. It's going to wake this power line up. You've already got ground running down to your, to your heating box below. And this is going to provide the power. You're going to complete the circuit and you will have heat. We're going to do the same thing on the, on the cooler. The only difference is we're not going directly to the fans. And that's because these fans all come with this. An AC adapter, which takes this down to 5.5 volt from the uh, 110. <clears throat> so we do the same thing. We run power. We split the power into two leads. Power into the hot side here. Power into the cooling. These are the last two. We run power into the cooling side. 
and another hot out of the cooling side. As we did with the heating side, we're going to bring the ground wire over. The only place on this controller, just like the other one, that you're going to connect the ground wire is going to be right here, next to the hot. The other one you're going to split off, and it's going to run all the way down here to this outlet that we have in the bottom. When, when this circuit completes, that will provide power to this outlet, which will power your fans. This wire this wire is your thermostat. Plug in the hot and the ground right there. The thermostat is going to go through the bottom with some hot glue. And that's how we wire it. All right, so now let's take a look at how we actually use these boxes and how we stack them on the hive. Uh, something that you are going to need is a screened bottom board. Without a screened bottom board, this just isn't going to work. And if you plan on feeding your bees with an internal bucket feeder, you are going to have to have a screened shim. We have to make sure that we have airflow from the bottom to the top of the hive, all the way to the controller box, because if you remember, the thermostats are hanging in the bottom of the controller box. So here's how you stack these. The first thing you'll have will be your base or your hive stand. After that, you will install the heater box. This is the box with the lights in it. That goes directly on your base. Next, very important, is your diffuser. This sits directly on top of your heat box. Next, you will have a screened bottom board. Now I'm setting this hive up so that you can see the back, so I'm going to put the entrance to the beehive facing the back. After your screened bottom board, You will have your brood chamber. Now you're going to have to build a shim that actually closes this off. Or you can just run duct tape over it because you don't want cold air getting, getting into your hive. Then you would have a honey super, which I don't have a spare one right now. If you wanted to feed your bees, you would put a screened shim, which I don't have one of those right now, your bucket feeder, and then a deep super to cover your bucket feeder. After that, you will place the control unit on the box. And again, these are adjustable with quartz. You can control the ventilation. Then you don't have to, but you can place your inner cover above the controller box, or you can just put your roof on the box. After you've done this, you will plug it in. Now we are making the connection from the controller box down to the heat box. And then you plug it in and you'll see the internal temperature of your hive. All right, now I'm going to show you how I calibrate my, my controller. So let's turn it on. Currently it's 60 degrees inside this box. You have your power button, your value select up or down, and a setup button. Over here it says heat and cool. We're going to ignore this cool indicator light because our boxes use one controller for the heat and another controller for the cool. So on the heater side, this means nothing. When the box is heating, you will see this dot move down next to heat. So let's set this up. First, we wanna make sure it's in Fahrenheit, and we know that it is, but I will show you where you do that. Now, these 
controllers can control five values, a temperature set, a differential set, that's plus or minus within the uh, range that you want your heater to come on or go off. Then you have a compressor delay, which we are not going to use. You have a calibration, allows you to set the temperature to the known temperature inside the box, another thermostat, for instance, or your other controller. And then you have your Celsius or Fahrenheit. So let's, uh, let's take a look at these and see uh, what we can see. Hold the setup down for three seconds to enter program mode. All right, the first thing we see is TS. That's our temperature set, so to control that, we will hit the S again. Now it will allow us to control the temperature. Right now it's set at 59 degrees. We're gonna set this, just for fun, to 70 degrees. Now, to lock that change in, we hit the power button. Now you'll notice the heat indicator light came on and this box is currently heating. Now, let's uh, take a look at where you set Celsius and Fahrenheit. It's already set to Fahrenheit, but we'll at least take a look at it. So we hold our setup button down for three seconds. Once we get into the menu, we can toggle through them with the value select switches. One of them is CF, that's Celsius Fahrenheit. You click the setup again, and now you have the opportunity to select between C for Celsius or F for Fahrenheit. To exit this menu, you hit the setup again, and now you're back at your main menu. You can traverse the menu and go down to CA, which is calibration. If we know that the inside temperature of this box is one degree hotter than our, our controller is reading, we can bump it by a degree or two or three or four, and I think it goes up to maybe, maybe nine degrees, I'm not sure. Let's uh, actually, let's take a look. Let's see how high we can go. Oh, it goes way up there, 15 degrees. You can, you can change it within 15 degrees. We're never going to need that. So let's, uh, let's set it uh, up one degree. Now, we're back to the calibration menu. Now the PT is for your compressor delay. We're not going to use that. And DS is your differential set. This is where you set your plus or minus value. So let's uh, go into there. And right now we've got it set at three degrees. And this is what I've got my hive set at, three degrees. So if I've got this thing set at 70 degrees, it is going to heat until it reaches 73 degrees. And then it's gonna shut off. And it will not start again until it reaches 67 degrees. So I've got a six degree window in there. And that helps me to deal with the slop that comes with heating these boxes with heat lamps that are down in the bottom of the box, right? So we will make sure that our differential, I, I set mine at three. You can set yours at one. You don't have to set yours at anything. But uh, I like, I like three degrees. And that's it. So now this box will continue to heat until I hit 73 degrees. When I hit 73 degrees, this light will go off. We do the same thing for the cooler controller. The only difference is we set the temperature that we want the box to be cooled to, and we set our differential uh, for that as well. So on my coolers, I usually have those come on at 85 degrees, and I usually have them go off at uh, 80 degrees. In the summertime in Georgia, it gets up into the 100 degrees, so when it reaches 85 degrees in that hive and that cooler comes on, it generally stays on uh, until evening. Uh, and that's, uh, that's it. Hold it down for three seconds, and you can shut it off. All right, well, I hope that this has answered some of your questions. And now, the next time you see this box, at least the controller, it will be out on the hive. I'm going to replace one of the version ones that I have out there where the controllers are actually on the inside of the box. It's much easier to uh, modify the temperature setting from the outside as well as see the, uh, see the temperature. So the next time you see this box, it will be on the, uh, on the hive out there. The heater box I'll save for a, for a rainy day or if one of my boxes burn out. Uh, and with that, I will see you next time. One more thing, and in case you're wondering, I got a lav mic, a lavalier microphone. Now, I hope this helps solve some of the problems I've had with audio. When editing my videos, my audio levels go up and down. Specifically, when I'm out at the hives, 
I'm always being overpowered by airplanes, jets, dogs barking, you know, neighbors, etc. I hope that this will help clean that up. I feel kind of silly wearing a lav mic, but everything that I've read says that this is going to make it easier for you to understand me, and uh, let's hope that it works. So, now, until next time, I'll see you later.